Stay tuned. Bridges starts now. We've got a lot coming up for you today on Bridges. My first guest says that sometimes the best thing we can do as a Christian is to stop praying and start doing. After that, we'll be joined by our studio audience where we will talk about the kind of prayer that honors God. So stay with us. We've got a lot coming up. We're going to let you take a little bit of a look about the book called Wasted Prayer by Greg Darley. As a Christian, prayer is one of the most important practices in our relationship with God. We pray for guidance, we pray for wisdom, we pray for important decisions. We pray at meals and in church and before long trips. So prayer is always a good idea. But what if it's not? What if prayer was keeping you from doing something God has called you to do? What if prayer was the obstacle to the change you wanna see in the world? What if prayer is holding you back from God's will for your life? Prayer is good except when it stops you from doing what God has called you to do. Stop praying wasted prayers. Stop praying, start doing. My first guest today is Greg Darley. Greg, I want to welcome you to the program. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Now, when I take a look at your title, Wasted Prayer, I think, well, you know, what is that about? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know at first glance, a lot of people are going to say, whoa, well, wait a minute, you know, wasted prayer, can, you know, can prayer be wasted? Um, so, you know, overall, the book is set up to do this. It's actually, my hope was to get people to a place where they're willing to do what I call, you know, seize that like Abraham moment, right? Mm -hmm. Where God says, hey, I want you to do something crazy, like pack up everything you own, uh, take your whole family and go somewhere that I'm, I'm going to tell you about later. What I want you to do is just go. Um, so like when I was reading that, that story multiple times, a couple things stood out. One was, how do you get to that place? Like, what does it look like in my faith and my walk with Jesus and, you know, in my prayer life when God said to do something crazy that I would actually do that? So I started reading that story a lot. And, and the one thing that really stood out was that Abraham never prayed about that. Right? God said, Abraham, I want you to go. And then two verses later, all of a sudden he's, he he, he's going, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah, so I looked at that as, you know, when God calls us to do something, and it could be huge, like, like Abraham, go, you know, move across the world, or it could be something really small, like, hey, why don't you invite your neighbor over for a barbecue, right? Something, you know, that we could do very easily. There are certain times when God has called us, he doesn't want us to pray about, should we do that or not? He just wants us to go do it, right? Right, because so, he wants us to obey in faith. Yes. Once he speaks, it's not up to us is what you're saying to just keep praying about it and praying about it. Uh, because sometimes I would think that, that you would be saying that we kind of use prayer as a means to procrastinate. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's kind of this cycle. The, the, the idea of prayer as procrastination is this. What makes it dangerous is that, yes, God, I, I want to obey or I'm going to obey but tomorrow. <laughs> or, yes, God, I'm going to do that. I'm going to tithe once I make a little money. Or I'm going to forgive him once he does this, you know. And so what's dangerous about when we use prayers procrastination is that we've convinced ourselves that actually we're going to be obedient. We're just going to be obedient, you know, at a later point in time or when wow. certain variables, you know, come together. Um, so, yeah, so we, we push that off and that just, it can become dangerous if, if we're not careful. Well, because disobedience is dangerous. Exactly. And especially if we're lulling ourselves with the idea that I'm not being obedient, I'm just praying yeah. about it. And we say that a lot. Well, you know, I'll pray about it. But, you know, I don't know sometimes that we really do pray about it. But I do want to ask you, Greg, because you, you use the Abraham story. Yeah. And for most people today, at least in the American church, if somebody said, oh, God told me and my family like to move all the way across the country country, we would be like, oh, no, you know, you want to use wisdom. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> that's, it's a, I, I, I mean, we were talking earlier, I was saying, you know, what I, I don't envy Abraham's conversation yeah. with, you know, with the family or with his, you know, with his wife of, here's what God said, and here's what we need to do. You know, all the questions that start coming up, well, what about the kids, and where are they going to go to school, yeah. and what about, you know, book club, and just, we're going to go to church, like all of those questions. I don't even envy, like, their community's reaction. I mean, if you tell your neighborhood, I'm leaving, no, I don't have a job, God told me to go do it. I mean, people are pretty much thinking you're weird. 
Yeah, you know, and so the the tension of, of where we are and the unknown and what God's called us to do, that tension is what we call faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think that's the importance of actually walking with God. Um, you know, actually, so the, the book, the idea is to help you again get to that point. So what does your prayer life actually need to look like? So when God does call, you're willing to take that seemingly from the outside, just a crazy risk. Um, you know, so the idea of, of prayer really is about, a, is about building a relationship. And the deeper a relationship is, the more you trust someone, you know. So if my wife were to call me up and say, Greg, I need you to, you know, do something crazy. Like I need you to, to get on a plane and, you know, fly across the country and go to this store and wait for this person to you know, give you something, you know, something crazy like that. Well, of course, it's my wife who I've known for, you know, right. over a decade in love and trust. Okay, I'll do it. You know, and I'll figure that out. But if it's, you know, someone off the street, hey, I need you to go do this. Well, of course, I'm not going to do that, right? You know, that wouldn't be wise. But the relationship really sets up our ability to say yes when God calls us to do something that we might say is crazy or definitely out of our comfort zone. So when you talk about in your book, Wasted Prayer, you're not really saying that we shouldn't ever pray. What you're talking about is developing a closer relationship with God so that when he says, Greg, here's what I want you to do, or he says, Monica, here's my will for you, that I will just immediately do it instead of saying, I'm going to pray about it and perhaps never get to it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's it. The, the idea is, actually, I want, I, I, I want you to stop praying certain prayers. You know? <laughs> so it's the, when God calls you to do something, whatever it is, the prayer should not be, God, should I do that? And that's where people, I think, have a tendency to get stuck is, because it seems so crazy or it just seems hard. I don't want to call up, you know, this family member that hurt me so long ago and forgive them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that cause, and I'm not saying that's easy, but we do know that God has called us to forgive. God has called us to love our neighbors. God has called us to take care of the widow and the orphan. Those are things that we don't have to pray about. Should we, or should we not do that? That's right. The prayer needs to become Okay, how can I do that? Given my circumstances, given the fact that, you know, I have two very young children, you know, uh, where my wife's at with, you know, current situations. God, give me wisdom based upon all that. How can I right. do what you've told me to do? Not should I, you know, do that? And that's, to me, that's the wasted prayer. And so it's how do we get to that point? And, you know, again, there's numerous things in the book, I think, that help us you know, get to that point. Because yeah. I think even when I listen to what you just shared, I can think of how many times, Greg, that I've gotten caught in, you know, that I know that God wants me to share my faith with somebody or to reach out and have um, that hard conversation with somebody that hurt me. And I'll pray about if I should do that, you know, like God, and I know he already put it in my heart, but I keep on praying about that. And what you're saying is I could say, God, how would I do that? What would I look like? Yeah. Help me to see... Yeah how this should happen. Now, is there a scriptural, I guess, foundation for this sometimes that you just need to stop praying and start doing? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I mean, Abraham, again, is a great example. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that story moves really quick. I know there was a lot of details probably left out, but again, we don't see Abraham praying, right. should I or should I not do this? Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a great, there's a great illustration of this in Joshua. Right, so you have the Israelites, they've been in, you know, for 40 years marching to the desert, They're, they get to the, to the edge of the promised land and now they've got to go, there's, a, there's an element of, of war and battle that they've got to go do. Uh, the first step is this huge fortified city of Jericho. God says, hey, here's what I want you to do. He gives them a battle plan, they execute it, they take down this massive, you know, massive fortified city. And then the, the next kind of point on the map is this little bitty town of Ai. And so Joshua's like, well, this is great because it's nowhere near what Jericho is. Let's just send a few people. And so they go up there and they get routed. Mm. And so what does Joshua do? He does what all of us would do. He gets on I me. Mean, he actually goes, actually probably too extreme. It says he, <laughs> he puts on sackcloth. He kneels down until dusk praying, basically saying, God, hey, we need you. What's going on? And what's interesting is God's response. The first thing he says to Joshua is, what are you doing on the ground? Yeah. And so we come to find out the Israelites actually didn't obey God. There were certain people that were keeping things. They were keeping gold and jewelry that they should have. They were told to give uh, to give to God, and they actually were keeping That's it to right. themselves. Mm -hmm. And so Josh, uh, God says, hey, Joshua, if you do what I told you to do, then, there's, there's, then, then we'll be victorious, right? So actually get off the ground, i.e. stop praying, 
and start doing what I've told you to do. And once he did that, not only do they go back and, and, and take that city, but they continue to take the promised land as they were you know, promised that they yeah. would. So. And, and the key thing, I think, too, in that story that you just shared, Greg, is the obedience. And that's what you were saying the whole time in the book, Wasted Prayer, that what you're focusing on is the deeper relationship by which we would immediately obey. Yeah. That we know we don't need to be praying about this anymore. God has said, go do this, this, and this. Yeah. What gave you the idea to write the book, Wasted Prayer? Had you been praying a lot of wasted prayers? Or? <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting, now we're yeah. getting personal and serious. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, uh, the, I, I mean, the book kind of came like a lot of ideas that, that I have is, I, I, again, I get caught with this, this picture, this question in my mind of, I wonder how often I do pray about something instead of just doing it. Yeah. Um, and so I started just kind of chasing that idea mm -hmm. and really looking for, are there times, is there a precedent where I shouldn't pray? And again, started reading the story of Abraham and, and, and those and all through the, I mean, even through the New Testament is great illustrations of that. Um, yeah, there was definitely a season of my life there where there were some questions of, God, I don't know what you want me to do next, right? Yeah. We, I mean, we had, my wife and I and some friends have been doing some ministry stuff. I was doing some other writing and there was a lot of things, but there wasn't a lot of clarity on what was next. And so I spent a lot of time praying, God, what is next? And I spent a lot of time not hearing anything in return. <laughs> And so, I mean, looking back, it was, it's great because I can actually see where, how God was moving, which is, you know, typically mm -hmm. how it works. But the a great principle I learned there was actually there's a lot of things that God, again, has called me to do sure. that I don't need to be praying about. It. And if I focus on what he's called me to do, the other question marks, the other blanks on the page will be filled in and they will be answered. You know, and so I shifted uh, my thinking in prayer time to, okay, God, how can I be obedient to what you've already called me to do? So right. what does it look like for me to, to really love my wife like Christ loved the church? What does it look like for me to love my neighbor? What does it look like for me to be joyful and Amen. generous? And, and just, again, numerous examples of, of things that God has called us to do that I probably wasn't doing to the level right. or even at all that I needed to be doing. Right. You know, and so he's done that for all of us. Yeah. All these things that we could be obeying right now. Thank you so yeah. much for coming. Thank you so much for today. having me. I, I'm, I was really honored and it was just a great conversation. It's been good to have you. You can learn more about Greg Darley, the book Wasted Prayer on our website right now. In just a few minutes, we're gonna be joined by our studio audience where we talk about the kind of prayer that honors God. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org. If you would like to purchase a copy of today's show for $15, you can send a check to the address on your screen or call us at 615-754-0039 be sure to mention the program number on the screen. Well, we are talking about prayer today and what kind of prayer does God honor? And right now we're joined by our studio audience and I thank all of you for coming out. You know, as I talked with uh, this particular author, Greg, about wasted prayer, the point that he was really trying to make is that if we already know to do something, we should just go ahead and do it rather than just keep on praying about it and making it longer and longer and longer. And really when it comes right down to it, when you say what kind of prayer does God honor, God honors a prayer that's coupled with obedience. It's not just enough to know what's right, it's that we've got to obey what God is telling us to do. And when we are obedient, we will see that our prayers are answered. Look with me uh, at James 2, and I'll read verses 14 to 17 there. It says there, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say, goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it's dead and useless. It's really speaking about being a hearer 
and a doer of the word. We can say to somebody that we see that's hungry and doesn't have on nice clothes, you know, I'll pray for you. We can say to somebody who doesn't have a job, I'll pray for you. And it's good if we pray. But if it's possible for us to do something, then we can do something. Even if that's as simple as buying them a combo meal. We can't fix all of everybody's problems, nor does the Bible tell us to do that. What we do is what we can. And I think so many times when it comes to prayer and obedience and being a doer, we just need to ask ourselves, if God didn't say no to this, I can go ahead and do it. If I see somebody on the side of the road and they've got to sign up, you know, we'll work for food, unless I feel that God is saying no, or I feel that check, you know, by the Holy Spirit that I shouldn't touch that, then it's just fine for me to buy that person a combo meal. I mean, it's a combo meal. I didn't sign up to finance their life or their house. I didn't, it's a combo meal. So I gave them a little bit of something to eat. And even if they're not entirely honest or there's a problem, that's on them. I did my part. We'll see that some people, you know, when it comes to praying, they get so heavenly minded. Oh, they're no earthly good. They're praying, praying, praying for a job, but they won't go look for one. Won't go apply anywhere. Just praying as if God is going to jump out of the heavens, come down through your roof and sit in the living room and say, you know, today go to ABC and they're just going to hire you. They're going to give you your dream job with no experience just because you prayed. You all, that doesn't happen. Prayer includes the practical. You know, the stuff that sometimes we think isn't so spiritual. I remember talking to a guy once. And he's like, you know, Monica, I just need more money. Pray for me to be able to increase my finances. I said, well, you know, have you started looking for work? Well, no, God told me not to work. Seriously, God doesn't tell people not to work when they need money and all your bills are past due. That's something else going on. That's probably not the Lord. Prayer includes the practical. Look with me at Proverbs 22, and I want to start reading to you there uh, from verse 3. It says, A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes on blindly and suffers the consequences. So what is that saying? You know, <laughs> there's sometimes we see a problem with our natural eye and we don't have to pray and get a word from God about it. You know, if I'm driving down I-40 and I see like a pothole or I see the tread off of tire in the middle of the road, I don't begin to pray and intercede for a word from the Lord on how to avoid that, right? I see it. I just steer the car as best I can into another lane. Why? Because I don't want to hit the pothole. I don't want to hit the tire tread. But the Bible says that the simpleton just sees that stuff and they just plow right ahead. You know, a lot of people, they got a lot more month than money, but they just keep on repeating that same thing. They don't think to themselves, should I get a second job? Hmm. Should I get a little more education? Should I increase my skill set? Hmm. My children, they don't listen very well. Huh. Should I just keep screaming? I mean, that's not working. You know, you watch some people, their children own them. The parent says, you know, I'm going to count to three. And if you're not quiet by three, and I'm thinking, why would you give them three? You tell them to be quiet. You're the parent, they need to be quiet. You don't teach them that they get to wait to obey. When mom and dad speak, the children listen. Prayer includes the practical. We act on faith with what we know. If there's a big problem ahead of us, like, you know, we need some extra money to pay some bills, of course we pray and ask God for his provision. You say, well, what does the Bible mean after having done all to stand? It says having done all. That means look for work, look for solutions. Is there a garage sale, a yard sale? I mean, let's just be real. Can you sell it on eBay? We do everything that we can. And after having done everything that we can to stand, then we stand. If we see a mess at work, like a messy room, a messy room in the house, 
You don't have to pray and get a word from God on cleaning it up. Seriously, people do that. You know, I, I, we got all this inventory. It's out there. None of it's marked. I'm going to pray about it. Well, you know, probably what you need to do is get out your little inventory stick or whatever it is, <laughs> line up your product and do it. When there are dishes in my sink, if I thought that praying could make them go away, <laughs> I would pray the best prayer, but see, that doesn't work. The longer they sit there, that food dries on it, then you gotta scrub even before it goes to the dishwasher. I know the commercials say you don't have to rinse and do that, but you do. Because if you don't, that stuff, I find it at the bottom of the dishwasher and it's not good. Nobody wants to eat off stuff with that nasty stuff stuck on it. And you know, you all, that example in the physical applies to the spiritual. When we see things that are wrong and we don't deal with them, we just pray and pray. Like there's a conflict with somebody and rather than look at them in the eye and say, it seems like there's a problem. Can we work it out? We pretend like it doesn't exist. And you know what happens? It grows and it festers. It destroys marriages. People that have been married for years don't talk about what is bothering them. And before they know it, they are over the moon mad at their spouse. They can't even have a decent conversation because they are dealing with 30 years of unforgiveness and bitterness, and God doesn't want that. He wants us to deal with what we can see, and sure, we can pray and ask for strength and ask for grace and ask for wisdom, but we got to do the practical. We got to have the conversation. We got to go to the sink and get the dishes and rinse them off or wash them up if we're going to get somewhere. And if we want to help the poor, we got to step out and just say to ourselves, you know, if God doesn't say no about this particular subject, and I don't feel any unction from the Holy Spirit not to do it, then it's probably an okay thing to do. So prayer is a means of communicating with God, but it has to be coupled with obedience. God honors the prayer that's coupled with obedience. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. The work of Christ in our lives is not just a surface work. It goes deep down into the core of who we are. And the joy that God, that Christ wants to produce in our lives is a joy that is of substance. To schedule Monica to speak at your next event, contact her at monicaspeaks.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Monica Speaks TV today. Today on Bridges, we've been talking about prayer and what kind of prayer does God honor? And God honors uh, the kind of prayer really that is coupled by obedience. And in just a couple of moments, I'm going to lead out in prayer over some of the requests that we get here at WHTN. And I want to let you know that if there is a need or a concern on your heart and you would like for us to join with you in faith and prayer about that, we would love to do that. You can do that by going to our website website, ctntv.org. Just click on prayer. It'll bring up a form. If you complete that information, your request will come right to us. And we do remember these things in prayer. These requests that I'm holding in my hand uh, have been called in uh, by some people that watch the station. This first one is from Lucille. And Lucille is asking really just for a closer walk with God. And you know, perhaps for many of you that are watching today, that's the cry of your heart. Maybe God seems or feels distant from you. Perhaps just the longing or the desire of your heart is that you would walk closer to the Lord. That is a prayer that God will answer and honor. So I'm going to lead out in prayer right now for Lucille. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. 
and I lift up this caller, Lucille, before you. And I thank you, first of all, Father, that the desire of her heart is to walk closer to you. And I ask you, God, that you grant that request in the name of Jesus. And for those that are watching today, that the desire of their heart is to walk closer, or God, perhaps they feel so distant from you. I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would bridge that distance in Jesus' name and that would people would see that you are very near and that you are a present help in our time of trouble. I also, we have another request here from somebody who did not leave their name and that's just fine too. And they're asking for healing uh, from a diabetic condition. And you know, God's word says healing is the children's bread that we can come for healing. So Father, I bring this caller before you in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Father, by the stripes of Jesus Christ that this person is completely healed from this diabetic condition and will walk every day of their life in 100% health. Father, I thank you for this healing in the name of Jesus. And you know, as you've been watching us and listening to us as we talk about prayer today, I encourage you step out in prayer. Ask God to show you what you need to do and then obey quickly. The kind of prayer that God honors is the kind of prayer that's offered and coupled with our obedience. I work hard for a living, but I wanna help build God's kingdom. I crunch numbers all day, but am I making a real difference? I help men bodies every day, but I want to help save souls. I want to be a part of someone else's story. Somebody else's story. I want them to find Christ. Find Christ. We all want to be a part of something that matters. At WHDN, we broadcast programs that teach believers and those who don't yet believe about the love of Jesus Christ. We broadcast 24 hours a day to Middle Tennessee. When you give to WHDN, you are making a difference in thousands of lives. Please support our efforts and be part of somebody else's story. You can give by writing to the address on the screen, calling 615-754-0039, or visiting online at ctntv.org and clicking on Donate. Well, so far today, we've talked with Greg Darley about wasted prayer. Our studio audience has joined us where we've talked about, you know, what kind of prayer uh, does God honor? And I want to thank you for joining us on Bridges today. I want to thank you all for watching this station, for praying for us. Many of you contribute financially to WHTN, and I want to take the time to say thank you. We love to hear from you, whether it's that you call in, you email, send a letter, your letters and encouragement mean so much to us. So thanks for joining us today. Hope that you have enjoyed uh, the new format for Bridges uh, where we have the studio audience and guests and things like that. It's just good to have you with us. It's good to know that you're out there and that you're supporting us. And I want you to know that we love you all and that we pray for you and that your support is so appreciated. We are almost out of time today, so we've got to go. But we do thank you for joining us. We say goodbye and God bless you. Thanks for watching Bridges. 